Hey guys, it's Rick Blau. Uh, it's work week 50. We got our first snowfall this year, so it's about time to take vacation. But before I go, I want to leave you with one more video called Component Modeling Basics. See you next year. Okay, so far all we know is that there is some guy from Russia who looked at some patents to come up with the obvious idea that engineering systems and processes were designed to perform a useful task and hopefully I can define its main useful function. Let's further the discussion of functions a little bit deeper to component modeling. We already know that the engineering system as a whole provides a main useful function, but usually engineering systems are composed of several parts, and those parts in some way must contribute to the main useful function. Graphically, we can disassemble the system and use functional modeling to describe how those parts interact with each other. In a sense, each individual part has its own main function in relation to those other parts. Here, we've placed a boundary around our engineering system to describe all those elements that fall within the system itself. And before we go any further, we need to have some definitions. For example, a component is either a substance or a field, and they are elements that are integral part of the system's design. A supersystem component contains elements that influence the system but were not designed as part of the system, but does have some resources that we can exploit. And the product is the focal element of the technical system itself, the main reason why the system was designed and is actually a special type of super system element. We further describe the system to show a basic function, which is a useful function that acts directly upon the product and it's most likely the main useful function of the engineering system. We use the term auxiliary to describe any function that acts upon components inside the system itself. And finally, we use the term additional function to describe any function that acts upon the super system components in our system. I think that's a fair question, my angry little elf. So let's see how we might apply this. Here we have a relatively simple system, an evaporative cooler, known to most of us living in the southwest as our primary cooling system during the hot summer months. The design hasn't changed all that much in 30 plus years. And it has a distinct advantage. It's very cheap to operate relative to conventional air conditioning. However, in the last few years, it's come under fire for its excessive use of water, a very distinct disadvantage. We'll see if we can improve its operation in the upcoming blogs using some trees techniques. The main useful function, we should all be able to guess by now, is to cool air. And obviously there are several components to help accomplish that function. The way the system works is that water is held in a small reservoir at the bottom of the shell. The water is pumped through a water line and then distributed to four porous pads held on the four sides of the shell. A simple float system, similar to a toilet tank, regulates fresh water into the reservoir as the level drops due to evaporation. A motor turns a blower fan that draws outside air in through the pad and cools the air before it's sent to the house via a duct. Oh yeah, besides the water use, there's some distinct disadvantages we need to disclose. The pump moves a lot of water to keep those pads wet, and the outside air contains lots of dust that tends to get stuck in the pad and eventually washed into the reservoir. And the water itself tends to be hard, and that mineral buildup can be significant as the water evaporates. Those solid minerals and dirt can eventually destroy the pump, so we put a screen around the pump entrance just to protect it. And for homework, see if you can develop a simple component model, knowing what you know of functional modeling and the system described, and uh, we'll talk about it when I get back next year. Happy Holidays!